Hey guys, Argyfantis here, and this is my walkthrough of tutorial number 9. So this time, we have the base set as usual, but our advanced set consists of Alright Core, which allows you to pay 1 attack to gain 2 gold, Flame Animus, which we've seen before, it's just a very cheap way to get a red and an attack, uh, Drake, which gives you 3 attack at the start of the turn, and you have the option of consuming a Blast Forge to temporarily gain 2 attack. Then we have Perforator, which is a slightly cheaper Tarsier that can attack immediately, but it costs a red every time you attack. And finally, Hannibal, which is a curious little unit. Uh, it does 2 damage, or can defend for 6, but it has the drawback of Frontline. Frontline is a mechanic that allows your opponent to attack the unit directly if they have enough damage to kill it. So if your opponent has 6 or more damage, they can choose to distribute 6 damage to the Hannibal, regardless of your defenders. So despite the drawback, the unit is very very efficient and uh, allows you to assemble quite a bit of damage early on. And if you can prevent your opponent from getting 6 damage, they'll just never be able to kill the Hannibal. So that is actually going to be our strategy going into this game. So starting off, we need to buy drones. We always want to have a reasonable amount of economy to support whatever strategy we're doing. So we're going to need to build up our drone supply for the first two turns. On the third turn, we're going to still continue droning, but we're going to buy a Blast Forge. So now we're starting to get into our build. With the Blast Forge, we will be getting a Flame Animus. And note that we have exactly enough gold to go Flame Animus, Drone, Drone. So this is a pretty streamlined build. We get everything precisely. With the Blast Forge, which provides blue, and the Flame Animus, which provides red, I am able to get a Hannibal. And with the extra gold, unfortunately, I'll be only able to get one drone, but it's okay. We have plenty of gold for what we're doing right here. And my strategy from this point on is just going to be to get a Hannibal every single turn. Because Hannibal is just such an efficient unit for assembling damage rapidly. I'm going to attack with this Hannibal, which will kill one of his engineers, because we're doing three. Uh, two damage will be absorbed by the wall, of course. And he will be killing one of our engineers with his flame animus next turn. Uh, that's okay, though because we're going to build a second Blast Forge. And then we still have three gold, so we can buy a drone. The second Blast Forge is going to be used to buy walls to defend against his Flame Animus, because the first Blast Forge is tied up buying Hannibals. So on this turn, we're going to attack with both Hannibals, buy our third Hannibal, and then buy a wall. And then with the remaining gold, we can squeeze in an Engineer. Even though we probably won't be using the energy every turn to buy drones, it's still good to have engineers on defense because they provide you with a lot of flexibility on defense. If I didn't have engineers, my opponents could say attack for three exactly and just kill a wall. And I would have no way to protect my walls. So now I buy my fourth Hannibal. And with the remaining golds, I can buy a Flame Animus. So every turn from now on, I'm just going to try to buy Perforators and Flame Animuses since I ran out of Hannibals. Now, note here that my opponent bought a Hannibal. So now I can demonstrate the frontline mechanic. Because I have more than 6 attack, I'm able to kill the Hannibal by just clicking on it directly, and then my opponent still has to defend the extra 4 attack. So, with the remaining resources, I'm going to buy 2 perforators, uh, flame Animus, and an Engineer. Note that my opponent is attacking for exactly 3 damage. Because I lost all my Engineers last turn, there's no way to really protect the wall. He'll be able to kill the wall, unless I leave a Drone back. So Drone obviously also has a defense of 1, which means I can sacrifice my Drone in order to keep my wall alive. This is why Engineers are so important. Usually you want to have some form of granularity, uh, defenders with low amounts of health, so you don't have to lose your wall. Uh, in this case, actually, my opponent just chose to lose his Rhino on top of his wall to defend against the Hannibals. Uh, if he didn't do that, he would have been able to kill my drone, but uh, in this case, he only attacked for 2 damage. Now, I can just attack with my Hannibals, my Perforators. Note that I still have one red, because I have a third Flame Animus, so I can buy another Perforator, I can buy another Flame Animus, and with the remaining blue, I can just buy a Steel Splitter. So, 
this uses my resources very nicely. And my perforators basically use the red I produce from my flame animus to attack every turn. So I don't have the red to use. Uh, the steel splitter I'm attacking with. And I can squeeze in my fourth perforator here very smoothly. And I just need to buy a wall here so in case he chooses to save his rhino. And then I buy a steel splitter and an engineer. Right. So if I didn't buy the wall, obviously he would be able to kill my engineer and my wall. Uh, by buying the wall, I get to save at least one wall. But of course he does choose to lose the rhino, which is fine. I'll just lose an engineer here instead of a wall. Right. If I didn't have the engineer and he attacked for three and I just had two walls, I would be forced to lose a wall. And now I just attack with everything. And I'm doing 18 damage. So this is just a massive amount of damage from having Flame Animus into Hannibal. Uh, this is kind of one of the strengths of Flame Animus. It just lets you assemble massive amounts of attack really quickly if you have the supporting units like Perforator and Hannibal. And you can really just streamline your build. You can just plan ahead and make sure you have exactly enough resources to buy what you want. Like, the Flame Animus produces the red for the Perforators to attack here, and then I just can buy two Steel Splitters every turn. And it's just kind of a really optimized build, which is enough to win the game. Now, if you want to try other builds, there are other options here. There's Auride Core, which allows you to get gold. You can play around with Drake. So there are other options to set, but this was just kind of like the most aggressive option to end the game, really. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you in the next video.